Hey guys, and welcome back to the Butterfly Gaming YouTube channel. I hope you guys have an amazing day. My name is Luke, by the way, if we have not met before from the content creator channel German Luke. And in today's video, I want to show you Streamlabs OBS. With Butterfly Gaming growing as an organization and more and more players coming in and looking to record their gameplay or even stream on Twitch, for example, Streamlabs OBS is a crucial software. Well, you can do a lot with Streamlabs OBS. Today, I just want to cover the basics so that you are ready to go ahead, put in your game, record it, and then experiment with whatever customization you want to do. Also, if you have any questions about Butterfly Gaming, it's the first thing down in the description is our website. Feel free to shoot us a message and ask away. So right now we're in Streamlabs OBS, and this is how it looks like when it's completely empty. It is important to know that there's also an older version of Streamlabs OBS, which is called OBS, which has its advantages and disadvantages, but in essence, it's not as user-friendly and pretty looking as Streamlabs OBS. Streamlabs OBS is really good at holding your hand and walking you through what you need to do in order to set up a successful live stream. That's why we're focusing on this. The first thing you want to do once you open up Streamlabs OBS is scout to the bottom left corner, go to settings. And if you are a streamer, you can now link your stream profile. So either YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook, whatever you want to stream on. You just simply link your profile. And then once you hit the go live button, you will be live. After you linked your profile, go over to the output version. The output version is what in essence the viewer or even in a YouTube video you will see later on. If you're completely new, you can leave this on simple, but I would highly recommend you that you go to advanced. In terms of streaming, don't worry about the audio track. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, always go for the NVIDIA encoder because it takes your GPU to encode the video instead of your CPU, which is always beneficial. And then when it regards to bitrate, you have to look up whatever bitrate is used on your platform in order to stream in 1080p 60fps. For example, Twitch caps the CBR, which is the constant bitrate, at 6,000 bits per second. 6,000 bits per second equals 1080p 60fps on Twitch. This might not be the case for YouTube or Facebook, so go over to YouTube and Facebook and look up whatever bitrate they require in order to stream in HD. Also, the bitrate is important to notice that it's dependent on your internet connection. If you only have an upload speed of 2 or 3 megabytes per second, you cannot stream in 6000, because 6000 is in essence a 6 megabytes per second upload speed. So go over to Google, do a speed test on your internet connection, do it at various points throughout the day, because it does vary slightly depending on the time of day and the internet usage, and then go from there. Anything else down here, if you have a pretty decent PC or if you're even streaming from your console and you're only using the PC in order to put up the stream, you can put these on the highest settings that you like. But what most important is probably recording. You can use Streamlabs OBS to record your gameplay. And this is pretty simple as well. Choose your path that you want to record the video to, where it's saved up to the end, and then record the format that you want it saved in. You can do MOV or MP4, MKV. I personally had the best experience with a MOV or an MP4. MKV did not work for me, and FLV, that was a no-no. In essence, every GPU by NVIDIA has a separate core dedicated to encoding. So if you are not encoding with your GPU, your GPU is actually not using that core at all. It cannot use the core for anything else but encoding. So if you have a GeForce graphics card in NVIDIA, RTX, GTX, whatever, use your NVIDIA encoder. It takes all the workload off your CPU, especially if you have an Intel CPU, which is not that great at multitasking, I would highly recommend. You are missing out on a lot of FPS. And then for recording, your bitrate obviously is not tied to your internet speed anymore. So here, do 10,000. 10,000 is more than enough to make sure that it records everything in 1080p 60fps. And then leave the rest the same. The last important thing, unless you're trying to mix audio on stream, this you don't have to worry about but now it comes to video your base canvas resolution obviously what your monitor is in minus 920 by 1080 and then whatever you want to stream it out as i want to stream a 920 1080 to a 920 1080 so that the viewer gets the same scaling if you have a lower end computer you could scale this down and you could stream in 720p that is an option i wouldn't go lower than this though because then it just looks eh, a little ugly and then again 
the smoothest it looks is in 60 fps if your pc can handle it always go for 60 fps don't go for 30 fps it just looks better and those are the basic settings for streamlabs obs that you need in the general tab you can also able and disable to automatically record while you're streaming if you're recording while you're streaming though i would highly recommend that you are saving the recording to a separate hard drive where the game is not being pulled from for example if you have an ssd where your game is being pulled from let's say c definitely go ahead and save your video on d maybe another ssd or an hdd do not go ahead and save your video on c as well some computers run into issues into trying to pull from a hard drive and trying to write on a hard drive at the same time it just kind of gives to a lag and it can just mess up your gameplay but that is it so now we're in streamlabs obs you have your settings pretty much set up what do we do now the basic thing to remember is it works all in layers so go ahead and select a scene and you can name it whatever you like for example i'm just going to name this test scene so a scene in essence is what everything combined will look like so now in sources you will start layering and layering and the most important thing to notice is your gameplay should always be on the bottom because your gameplay will take up all of the screen so go ahead and do a game capture for example you can add a game capture name it whatever you want it to be and in here it will usually automatically detect whatever game you're playing but if it doesn't you can also decide that it should capture any full screen application if you're swapping games often or a specific window if you only want it to capture your game and when you alt tap don't want it to capture anything else obviously there is no game running right now but this is your basic gameplay recording and if you only want to record your gameplay you're done that is all that you have to do your desktop audio is automatically recorded if you have the right monitor set up so if you go over here on the right to properties you can now select whichever monitor or audio input you want it to capture and there you go that is basic gameplay recording one-on-one -on -one. but what if you're streaming if you're streaming you want to go over here and you want to add an audio input capture which in essence is the microphone that you are using in order to comment over whatever you're doing the so girl hat and add this name it whatever you want it to be and in the end it can be any kind of audio input that you like for example i'm using the blue snowball i'm not going to select it now because i don't want it to run into issues with the software that i'm recording with at the moment but that's how you record your voice the next thing you want to do is add a camera so go back to your sources and add a video capture device same thing right here name it whatever you like it to name and then you can select whatever camera that you're using Let's just select the Logitech, which is not turned on at the moment. And this is where the layering comes into place. So now you see, this is where my webcam would be. And you can move this around on the frame as you like. Simply select the source and you can move the source around. But this is where I was talking about the layering. You always want your gameplay on the bottom because you don't want your gameplay to overlap with anything else and hide anything else. For example, if I put my gameplay over my webcam in the sources down here, you now see that the webcam is gone and the viewers would still be able to hear me because of my microphone, but they wouldn't be able to see me. So make sure that your gameplay is always on the bottom. You can now resize the webcam to whatever size you like, move it to wherever you want it to move, and there you go. Now you have a webcam, you have a microphone, and you have your game capture. But if you're streaming, you probably want a little bit more. So the one thing that you definitely need when streaming is an alert box and you can do a lot of customization in this alert box as you can see you can do your own custom alerts and you can test an alert for example as well if you like but the alert box always needs to stay on the top of your sources the gameplay needs to stay on the bottom and the alert boxes need to stay on the top because you want the alerts to show over anything else while you're streaming the alerts is what usually gets people the most hype when someone subscribes when someone follows when someone cheers they like to have their name up there if they are supporting you the alert box needs to be on the top of your sources at all times so that the alerts will always be displayed on screen and those are the basics for streamlabs obs you can now hit record down here if you simply want to record the screen and we're going to record the gameplay you can hit go live if you want to broadcast live to whatever platform you're streaming on or you can enable it in the general settings that you want to do both at the same time. So as soon as you hit live, it's also recording your gameplay. 
One thing to keep in mind though is if you are streaming on Twitch for example, you don't necessarily need to record your gameplay unless you want it in a completely different settings because Twitch does save your bot. You so at the end of your stream you can simply go and download your VOD if you like. And and those are the basics. Obviously in the sources there's a lot of things you can do. You can add text, you can add gold, you can do different audio, different window captures, and there are different widgets that you can use to make your stream more interesting. But this is for you to experiment around with. You have to find your own design, your own style of stream that you like. But to sum this up, let's say you have an overlay that you would like to put on your screen. Again, just add a media source. If it's an animated overlay, it will most likely be a WebM or an MP4 file. So go ahead and add a media source and it will tell you all the files that it supports. For example, OBS, where it's falling short, it doesn't support MKV. That's why MKV files don't work for me. And you have to do everything in WebM. But there you go. This is how you add your overlay. You would just add it and then select the overlay. Select if you want it to loop, if it's animated and so on. And again, your overlay would go right over your game capture. Your game capture should still be on the bottom and then your overlay would be on top with maybe your alerts right here, your most recent follow and all these kind of things. But remember, alerts on the top, gameplay on the bottom. And that is it guys. Those were the basics for Streamlabs OBS. How to set it up for streaming and recording for your gameplay if you want to put it into a montage or anything like that. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments below. If you are part of the Butterfly Gaming team, I hope this was somewhat beneficial to give you at least a little bit of an insight and start to Streamlabs OBS. But if you have any questions, you know where to reach me and I'll be more than happy to help you troubleshoot anything or help you set it up. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And if you want to be part of Butterfly Gaming, Link is down in the description for our website. Shoot us a message what you can do for Butterfly Gaming, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.